And let's start with the first point on the agenda, which is usually is questions and issues, open forum. Anyone has any questions which are not on the agenda? And here comes the usual silence, which only I break because I don't feel comfortable with silence. Okay, so I guess no questions and issues. So let's look at the open PRs and issues. And on the last triage call, we got a bit stuck up with this issue about the uh, garbage collection logs and the log files in general. And we decided to move it to the sync up call to not delay the, the triage. So I guess we can continue the discussion here. So I think In the triage call where we ended was with the question whether we want to do this just for the garbage collection logs or for all logs and whether it should be to a separate volume or whether it should be stored somewhere else. So we didn't actually know what do we want and whether we think it's useful, right? So any opinions? Okay. I think the point I'd got to in the triage call was it feels like this is worth leaving open if we make it more general for sending logs to a file, but perhaps if we don't want to make it more general, we should close it unless somebody else, and then someone can always ask for it. We can always reopen if needed, given that nobody else has come along and asked for this specifically. Sorry, I'm late, so I've not caught the first of this for context, but um, I think Mikhail discussed with me in the past um, occasions where logging to the local file system rather than relying on um, the Kubernetes logging has been invaluable in debugging weird and wonderful networking situations. I don't know if Mikael yeah, I remember on that. discussing this. Um, yeah, and so in some cases we so we had um, basically a broker shut down and uh, some useful logs were only on the local storage. Uh, just looking at um, at what was sent to to a log system uh, from just just the standard out. So, we didn't have the information there because it just got cut before sending. Um, so yeah, so I think writing to uh, to a volume or to local or to the local volume is kind of useful. Thing is, if it's a separate volume, I mean, obviously, like, do we want to put stuff on the data volume? If not, if it's the, a separate volume, how do we deal with it? Like Mika, the logs are basically always written locally. The way it works is that the container produces the logs into the standard output or standard error. And basically the container runtime is storing that in local files on the worker node. And then when you have something like FluentD collected, what it basically does, it kind of hooks up into the container runtime directory where the container logs are stored and it's reading them from there. Are, are these files persisted across restarts? Like if, if I kill the container? And... I think that would depend on the container runtime configuration, not necessarily. But at the same time, I don't think you can easily use local volumes to store that differently. So you would need to have just a regular persistent volume mechanism as used for the data directory, basically. Mm. 
that that doesn't change. Does that change the relevance of that use case? If well, it it, it doesn't, doesn't really. If you think having the files in, so I, I'm, I'm I personally on one hand understand it, but I don't think it. I think the right use case where this might be valuable is if for whatever reason you need to produce more logs which are not feasible to be captured from the standard output. Because if you would have a huge load of the logs, then the standard output might have issues, whereas the file might be fine. From my experience... For this, sorry, sorry, I cut you. From my experience, the situation where you lose the logs because of some infrastructure issue, I am not convinced that having it on a on a volume in a Kubernetes environment somewhere over network on some EBS volume, for example, I'm not necessarily convinced that would work any better than the standard mechanism. But the, if you would have a huge lock throughput because of some low level debugging, I think that's where it might be super useful. So I think a good candidate for that are the control logs. Those are super verbose and you can't send them on a CD out, otherwise they just, uh, they just, yeah, they just form the rest, you only see that. And those are very useful on your debug issues. So you, you want to have them, but you can't have them all the time on a CD out, it's just not possible. So it sounds like we have a bunch of situations where we think it might be useful. So should we then change it to something that's more generic for locks and not just for garbage locks? And should we give it a need a proposal where we can then go in detail through whether it should reuse the data volumes or whether it should uh, have a separate volume and so on. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Okay, 24th, what is it, March. Why do I put there the date when the date is added to the comment anyway? Yeah, none of us have said anything for, for weeks. I suspect because we didn't notice ourselves. Unless um, you have Git going down again and then the comment doesn't get posted till days later. As you can see, I'm not a type good at typing anyway. Like this, I guess that works or Needs triage is gone. Needs proposal. 
Do we want to mark it as a help wanted? I guess nobody plans to work on it anytime soon from us. Yeah, I agree. Hangout wanted makes sense. Okay. So I guess that's one thing we solved. Okay, then the other two PRs, they are really here just to raise some more attention. So uh, I played with some tuning of the memory memory usage in the in the operators. And Tom, I think it would be great if you can find some time to have a look at it. What do you think about it? Yeah, it's on my to-do list to catch up with quite a few PRs that I need to And review. I guess the same applies to this one if you want. So that's kind of an attempt to move some code from the Kafka assembly operator class, which is very huge and monolithic uh, to a separate class uh, to help at least a bit there. Uh, I think Tom Cooper and Paolo looked at it and they approved it. So if you feel like you are too busy, then I guess we can just proceed with it. But if you want, or anyone else, if they want to have a look at this, then yeah, feel free to have a look and I can wait. I'll try to look at it tomorrow, but if I've not commented on it by Monday, then just go ahead and merge it. Okay, sounds like a plan. And then just as a general thing, there's uh, Jesus, the Zoom UI is again staying here and doesn't want to leave. There's a lot of other pull requests which are opened for some time. There's Marosh's lot of system test PRs which didn't seem to have moved for a long time. Uh, Tom, we have there some PRs as well, which didn't move for since last year. So I think it would be great if everyone can go through their PRs and either talk with the people they need reviews from to remind them of it or, or close it or decide what to do with them. Anyone has any other PRs they want to discuss specifically? Then there's also one new proposal since last time. And that's about the uh, replication, uh, about the quota plugin and how it can handle replication traffic. So uh, if you didn't saw it yet, then uh, yeah, you should have a, have a look at it if you are interested in this. It's there, I think, since. I don't know, Monday or the weekend, so it's not there that long, but have a look. Any other proposals to discuss? Then I guess our favorite next topic is incubation. Yeah, so we... I've got a bit more news um, this time. Um, so we've got some draft text, I guess, um, for the PR that we would open against the TOC CNCF repo. Um, I don't know if Paolo is in a position to share this on the call. Um, it's in a, a repo that he had. Yeah, I can um, share if you want. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So let me see if I can share. You want to share a screen or or a link? Yes, I should. Uh, just moving all the other useless window I have open here. I'm picking the right one. So. I'm 
coming. Okay, so let's see. No, it says also disabled participant screen sharing. Ah, oh, Jesus, how does do I allow? Tom, anyway, if you want to go through the 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 PR can, that we can have you try again? Room, yeah, you you should be able to share as well, Tom, because you have access right to the to the repo. Let's see. I guess you can see, right, my screen? I cannot see your screen. I can see your screen. So I assume that everyone who's not the host can see your screen, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> oh, I can see your screen as well, just in the fifth Zoom window shown on the fourth monitor. So it's not possible to exit from uh, full screen mode when you are sharing. Oh, it's annoying. Just press escape or? No, doesn't work. Well, I guess there is no way. Well, if you give the link into the meeting minutes, I can share it. Yeah, well, it's a private repo, so I should ask uh, you to join to the repo. First. Nah, then, then you should keep sharing it. Yeah. So, Tom, would you like to, to go through or should I? Um, you can if you want, Paolo. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the kind of proposal that we 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 came with. So uh, what we are showing here is uh, first of all a little bit of introduction about StreamZ. Uh, we we use a little bit of more what we have in the um, for the the annual review. And then, uh, yeah, explaining even uh, uh, what are the main projects that uh, StreamZ integrate with in the CNCF Foundation. So highlighting the various Prometheus, OPA, Kida, Jaeger, OpenTelemetry, and so on. Uh, yeah, this is just a kind of short introduction. Now, the next one, uh, the next section is mostly about how uh, the StreamZ project aligns with the, the, the CNCF uh, mission, yeah, which is about to make the cloud native computer ubiquitous. So uh, here we are talking about all the, 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 the kind of stuff that uh, uh, StreamZ provides in order to have uh, uh, Kafka deployed in a kind of cloud native environment. So leverages the declarative APIs uh, and things like that, right? For all the kind of stuff that Stream is able to to handle in um, in Kafka within Kafka, and uh, even helping uh, highlighting that it's uh, it's even helping the the automation of all the operational stuff uh, in order, that, yeah, so that all the people can can kind of use. Uh, uh, Kafka in a, an easy way when it's about running Kafka on uh, Kubernetes. So yeah, just trying to make the 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 the, the statement and the CNCF mission about why using StreamZ for running Kafka on Kubernetes. The next one is about community. So what is the way uh, for the community to interact with the developers, maintainers, or even yeah, uh, having communication be between users? So you know the list about the CNCF Slack channel, GitHub issues, the community call that we have as this one. And uh, we also showed that we uh, were uh, showing and talking about StreamZ to different KubeCon office hours. And yeah, we encourage people to, to, to engage with the community and make contribution. Talking about the incubation stage uh, requirement, uh, so about the production usage, it's uh, just a link to the adopters uh, list where we have the companies that publicly 
are using uh, uh, StreamZ. So in general, I guess that they are the only ones. There are even some other companies that maybe are using StreamZ, but they are not in this list because uh, yeah, they didn't provide any detail to, to add them, their names to, to the list as well. Uh, the same about committers. So just yeah, making um, points about how many maintainers we have, what are the companies, uh, um, where these um, um, maintainers are uh, employed and uh, links to the governance to have more information about uh, uh, what are the owners, uh, how does it work when, um, yeah, when it uh, comes to peer approval with the owners and maintainers, etc. So showing just some stats, but these stats are already stale, I guess uh, we had to update them anyway. Uh, before submitting the proposal to the TOC. Um, then for the versioning scheme and the security process, as we already addressed it in the, in the previous week with the different PRs, we have a link to the uh, releases doc and the security one. So for people who don't know, the releases doc is a new doc that we added um, during the last weeks explaining how the release is, uh, works in, uh, in StreamZ, so the cycle that we are trying to, to kind of match, uh, what's the, the, the release process, talking about release candidates, and then, yeah, uh, the, the final release, how we keep track of the change, with change log as a milestone in GitHub and things like that, and then how to get notified <coughs> for new releases, and uh, how we deal with the uh, new features, breaking change, deprecation, so even mentioning the feature gates that we have for the stream, the super editor, and so on. Uh, regarding the security, it was already in place before. Uh, we had just to add the kind of sentence here about what are the versions that are supported. So we are going to, in general, address security issues uh, uh, in the, um, in the, with the patch release or in the next minor release, it depends on the, on the kind of, um, uh, level of, uh, yeah, the kind of problem that, uh, uh the, the security issues is related to. Uh, the last part is about future plans. So we try to summarize the main points about the future plans. So of course, the first one is about having, uh, uh, Kafka, uh, not using Zookeeper anymore, so working in the in so-called craft mode, uh, and even providing, of course, to the community a kind of migration path in order to move their own Kafka cluster running with Zookeeper to a Zookeeper-less Kafka cluster. Uh, also, some more uh, integration with the uh, cruise control. Um, and, uh, yeah, trying to investigate even how to, to spread the Kafka cluster across multiple Kubernetes cluster. Um, and last is about trying to, to, to see the value for the community, even to, to share some operational experience with the common tooling, um, some uh, SOPs, uh, and more documentation related to how to operate the Kafka cluster when it's running on, uh, on Kubernetes. Uh, closing about the future plans, not just with the features, but even with the, uh, the usage and the community. So uh, yeah, we, we already mentioned that uh, we, we, we saw uh, increasing the usage of uh, StreamZ in production with the different companies, uh, as we see in the adopters. Um, but uh, our feeling was uh, highlighting that maybe some other users uh, uh, maybe are not using StreamZ because they are kind of scared by the fact that today we have a 0.x version, so it's not 1.0. So uh, making a new, uh, in the future, making a, finally, a StreamZ 1.0 release maybe could be a way for um, uh, showing uh, that StreamZ is already mature for sure because it's, a, it's mature, I would say, but yeah. To, to get more people that today are scared by the versioning that we are using right now. Uh, of course, having uh, StreamZ accepted in the CNCF incubation level will be a way for increase our visibility. Um, yeah, in order to have more um, uh, people to use it. 
and uh, we want also to increase uh, the number of um, uh, contributors and diversity inside our organization and uh, in general uh, on the StreamZ project and uh, yeah it should be a way for increasing the number of committers so growing the number of committers on the project itself so i guess that taking a look at what we needed these are the main pieces that built the the proposal so i don't know tom if you have anything to add if you want to dig in more something or then questions from the others And I think that's a fairly good sort of uh, summary of what we've got based on um, the sorts of proposals that other projects moving from uh, sandbox to incubating have uh, used in the past. So, yeah, I don't know if anyone has any questions, but we can, I think we can distribute this um, in the minutes. I don't, I think we're at the stage now where it's not exactly secret um, and get some wider review. Yeah, I have a couple of questions, uh, especially in the community and future plans uh, section at the bottom. If you can scroll back there. Um, so in, in functionality, should, should we have like uh, tickets to basically describe the future things we want to build? Like to, because I, I wonder like, like how, uh, if I join the community, how do I know about these future plans? Yeah, I mean, we we do have a, uh, a GitHub um, roadmap that we could link to. Um, we don't always do the best job of keeping that um, up to date. And it kind of depends as well on um, what, what sort of comes from the community by way of contributions. You know, it's we sort of got stuff that we know that we'd like to to work on sort of maybe as um maintainers but um it's uh, these things are, are always you know stand to be influenced by you know what users want so it's always sort of a bit of a moving target but there's no reason we couldn't link to that roadmap if if that's what you're asking for Mikael. yeah yeah but basically that was my point like yeah how how do you know like where are these tracks? Is it only in uh, in the head of the maintainers or is it something that public that anybody uh, wants to contribute or wants to use uh, the project is, is able to, uh, to discover it himself or herself? Um, just uh, like a small need craft is also the capital R. Uh, so yeah, just to, to be... Uh, to be exact here. And the, the last thing is about the usage in the community. Uh, I wonder if we, so here we say, oh, we want to, to keep increasing the numbers, but are there any actions we've taken to go into that direction? I'm thinking stuff like, you know, um, the Google Summer of Code or, or you know, things like you no know, outreach or, when it, I know it's always super hard to, <laughs> attract contributors and uh but I wonder yeah so um, or if we can think of any activities we should be doing to support this claim we did try to do uh google summer of code last year and um we but basically it, the effort didn't really sort of come to anything um that time uh, i must admit i haven't um tried to participate again this year and I'm we have I have in the past also looked at outreachy um, I can't remember I can't remember the, the issue I had there I think I might have at the time I think the issue was the sort of the sponsoring organization at that point and it, it we have to go through CNCF um, I think when I was looking at it, I was trying to go with, through Red Hat and that doesn't, basically, you're not allowed to do that. Um, and I'm not sure I have um, had my eye on the ball uh, well enough in advance to participate in the CNCF stuff um, since then. But I think those are both really good points. Um, it would be good to at least 
you know um, try and make progress on on one of those um, and ideally both the issue is having the uh, sort of the maintainer time to mentor people properly um, I've you know speaking sort of personally I've been really sort of pushed for time recently as well which is what fed into the not going for Google Summer of Code this year but um, we should definitely try and do more of that in the future because it would help with um, getting contributors. Well, that uh, anyway, it's something that we can add as an action uh, item, right? That we want to leverage, uh, I don't know, this kind of events for uh, increasing the community. Yeah, are, are you saying add it as an action item in this proposal to basically sort of commit that we are going to try and do that in the future? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. But uh, assuming we can make good on, on that sort of promise, it all boils down to having people that can mentor these people participating in these programs. I'd be, I'd be keen to get involved in that. We yeah. have had... Right. Uh, interns in the past from from universities who've helped out but i think google summer of code would be a step up from that what are other uh, action items that we will do for to to, to increase uh, other than the google summer of code there are any i'm thinking about any kind of others That and outreachy are the only ones that I'm aware of. But we could see if there's any others that the CNCF participates in. Well, I'm sure you can do a lot of other things, right? Take part in, I don't know, hackathons and so on, but a lot of these things need a lot of time. Yeah, but if we want to grow like the the contributing committee, uh, community and uh, you know, gain more uh, committers, uh, basically you got to invest. Uh... I think that's much easier for you to say. Than <laughs> yeah, for us, like like twenty four hours a day to actually do you know i mean absolutely i mean uh, uh, um. i guess cncf also has this community bridge program or i guess L it is changed to lfx now i don't exactly remember but i have some friends who are part of the cncf like so, as some projects of the cncf organization and the the CNCF holds this 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 all LFX and community bridge program. So maybe I can also like explore a bit about it and ask my friends that how the the things goes there. Yeah, um, that would be good, especially if they've got experience of it in one way or another. It would be good to hear. Um, if that's worked for them in some form. Um, yeah, please do, Shubham. Yeah, sure. So also I'm not a maintainer, but I mean, I've done Google Summer of Code as a student and as a mentor in the past. So you, if I could, you know, or if I can help or with that or with another program, I mean, I'd be happy to uh, to help if possible. The only drawback that I see yeah, on, on the Google Summer Code, because I was mentor uh, two times in the past, is that uh, yeah, after helping with the, 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 the two uh, projects, then you see the, the students just disappear and they are not, uh, so they have not commitment to, to make more progress later. This is only my, my big concern. So they worked, for example, on a vertex and QTT component and part of the HTTP bridge. Uh, but then, yeah, I didn't see the student involved anymore just during the Google Summer of Code. That's my only concern that we have a contributors for some time, for time of the Google Summer of Code, and then 
nothing more later. Yeah, which, I mean, that's fine in that that's sort of all they're signing up to is making that contribution. They're not sort of uh, signing their lives away by participating in Google Summer of Code. Obviously, as a project, we would like them to, you know, sort of continuing uh, with contributions. But I think that's just, you know, to, to some extent, it's kind of unavoidable. Um, I think also it helps us validate the onboarding process, like how fast can somebody get started and do something. Uh, and, and I think also the is it easier for people to get into participating, you know, and contributing to Strimzy, you know, from a sort of a code writing point of view, for example. Um, my feeling is that there's the learning curve sort of doesn't start off too steep but maybe it does get to a quite a steep point before it starts leveling out again um probably you know by hand holding someone through it we uh we could improve it somewhat uh, and also the increase the scope for the eligibility of students i think before you had to be undergrad and uh, uh probably like with another yeah, like, year or two at the uni. So it's hard, you know, when you go back to uni after your <laughs> your summer project, you don't have time to go back to... Uh, um, I think it's open to anyone now. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. So, I mean, also, also I'm not saying, you know, this, this, um, this scheme is like the silver bullet, you know, just... Uh, I was just thinking, like, oh, have we considered that ways to support the claims we're making? Let's say we're hoping to increase the community. <laughs> no, it's a really valid point. Thank you for that. Okay, so I guess the next step is that you will make it public so that everyone can have a look and comment. Yeah, we can um, fix those things that Mikhail uh, pointed out and make it public and uh, send it round um, for further comment. What we want to proceed to make it public? Should I, I don't know, move this to to a specific public repo? Maybe from uh, I don't know my, my my name or making this repo public. Um, can you not just push a fork the um, CNCF TOC repo and push a branch there, but not open a PR? Oh, okay, right. Um, yeah. Or possibly then open a PR against your own repo so people yes, can use yeah, the, yes. the PR review mm, flow okay. that they're used to. Okay. So next step, I will fork the TOC repo. I will create a PR and then I will send a link to that PR on my own fork. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then Jacob, uh, we want to to share the link uh, waiting for the next community call or I don't know, uh, on the mailing list, on the Slack channel, when it, that's ready? I guess you can, well, you want people to look at it and comment. So if you share it on the, on the Slack channel, you might get it earlier than in two weeks. If you share it next in the next call, then that yeah. will be in two weeks, right? Okay, let's say that I will share uh, on both mailing list and uh, Slack channel. Okay, so I guess that's the incubation. Next point on the agenda is the survey. So should we go through it one last time? and look through the changes Tom made since last time. 
That's fine with me, yeah. So I guess this is the first thing which is left. And this seems completely reasonable to me. So we should be accepted. Anyone has any comments or anyone has any objections? Fine by me, just accept it. I wonder if E is, I don't use it. So. Sort of, I cannot use it. Well, it's, yeah, I don't. It's, I, I don't use it. Use it for some other reason. Might be uh, an F worth having. Yeah. So, well, like this. That's what we are asking yeah. for. Yeah. Then I guess this is the next one. Anyone, any objections? Not for me. Should we add a uh, DN Jacob to the list? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm kidding. Like <laughs> DM Jacob. <laughs> 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 no, let's not add that. <laughs> we don't want to encourage people down that route. <laughs> okay, the next one. Any objections? Okay, so I guess that's our 10 questions. Excellent. Um, I will converse with the CNCF and see if they can get that sorted out for us. Thank you very much everyone for helping with that. It did make me realize just how hard it is to design a good survey. Okay, thanks for all your work on this Tom. The past as well as the future work. <laughs> That's right, guilt me with the future work. Keep my nose <laughs> on the grindstone. Did we already talk about the PRs which are waiting for your review? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've mentioned those. <laughs> okay. Uh, then maybe some topic which doesn't wait for Tom. So the original plan for the Strumzy pod sets expected the feature gate to graduate to beta in 0.29 and be enabled by default. Uh, So if we wanted to move to beta in 0 0.29, then that's now. So that's why I wanted to raise this. I think the development was a bit delayed. I'm not aware of any major issues right now, but I don't think with the fixed issues and so on, it was really available in the alpha state. So I'm not sure like I feel that enabling it by default in 0 0.29 is the right move. And I think maybe we should consider moving that to 0 0.30 or 0 0.31. Well, I think um, I wouldn't want to stand in your way if that's how you feel about it since you've obviously sort of driven that work and know it best. Um, I think, you know, 
allowing a little bit more time. I don't know how much testing, how thoroughly we're sort of testing this at the system test level. Um, you know, I'm sure we've got some, but um, have we got all the tests uh, implemented that we are I hoping don't to think, have? I don't think the tests are necessarily the main issue. I think the test coverage is probably reasonable, but the test coverage doesn't necessarily equal some more longer running experience. So, yeah, I know about one user who actually used it in his clusters and I'm using it in my home cluster. But I think after fixing the issues, it could use more kind of using it in some brokers. I think Jakub has some project with some long running brokers. So maybe he can try to enable it there as well in 0.29. Uh, and I can continue using it in my own cluster to kind of see a bit better what kind of problems might be there, which are not necessarily captured by the, by the system tests. Jakob, are you able to do that? those sorts of long running tests, set those up? Yes, definitely. Okay, cool. Okay, well, it sounds like um, deferring, moving it to beta to at least 0.30 um, would give us a bit more confidence that um, this is going to work. Okay. Uh, just in the in the incubation doc, we mentioned like uh, planning a one point zero release. Is it the type of type of feature we would like to to have uh, ready for one point zero? If one point zero means craft support, then this is something that will be ready in one point zero. Yes. Okay. At least by the current plan, I mean plans change, right? Did that answer the question or, or did you have some follow up or? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, we have nine minutes left and we still have some topics we didn't discuss. So drop support for a cube. 1.16 to 1 point something. Tom, I think you raised it initially. Yeah, I think I dropped that line in here weeks ago. I can't quite remember the context now. Was there some API that we want to move to that would make continued use of 1.16 difficult? I think it was a conversation with you, Jakob, that prompted I this. don't think there's necessarily anything what's uh, anything major and blocking like the CRD changes. So the 1.16 is basically coming from the CRD support. So there are several APIs which are deprecated and will be removed. The I think the network policy, we don't use it anymore, but the ingress API, we have kind of dual implementation. Uh, and for, uh, for the pod disruption budgets, we have now dual implementation. Uh, but I don't think there's that much blocking things where we would say we need to drop the old versions. Uh, that said, if we decide to drop it, I guess it would be great if we can announce it like one or two versions up front. And to be honest, 116 is already quite old. So, yeah, I don't think we will necessarily look bad for not supporting it anymore. 
but I guess the question is, which will be the versions which we drop, right? Because- Yeah, what's the question mark in this? Yeah, exactly. Is it feasible to just say, we'll support the latest Kubernetes plus the last N and therefore have a rolling drop policy? Or is that not gonna work? We can, absolutely. Because uh, that means... would be a lot easier to communicate and for people to understand the consequences of. Yeah, so the question is, <laughs> what will be the N, right? Uh... It also makes it a bit more, so the way we do it currently is basically the Streamzy, like we quite often test with the newest and with the latest supported, right? And if you have the floating support, then it's quite chaotic, like which version do you actually support in Streamzy 0.29 or Streamzy 0.30, because it will be changing a bit. It's also, a bit blurry because like Streams 28 doesn't support Kubernetes 1.24 because it doesn't exist when we released it, right? But most likely it will work on it. So I guess there's also a question, what do we mean with support? And I guess at the end, the thing is what will be the end, right? I don't think we want to, like 116 is very old. So just because now 116 is what? Seven releases, eight releases behind 123. I definitely don't think we want to say based on that that we will support the last eight releases because there will be situations like when we migrated to the CRDs, when we actually support just four releases basically, right? Uh, so I don't think we should say we support the last eight releases. And if we say we support the last three releases or something reasonably short to cover some actual API changes, is that good enough for most of the users? Yeah, I mean, that's a very difficult question to answer up front. Um, and in one go, one thing that would give us, I mean, the Strimsy survey, I, I think we've said this sort of before, um, would give us some insight into what people are actually running because it's one of the questions that we ask and therefore, you know, allow us to make some sort of judgment call on um, what would be reasonable, what wouldn't end up people sort of with people frustrated by the decision that we were taking. Um, and another thing that we could do to sort of give a bit more predictability to it without saying it's the most recent version plus the last N might be to have a, you know, commit to a six monthly review um, of the range of versions that we're supporting. And that would allow us to sort of um, keep sort of track of this so that maybe it doesn't build up to supporting the last eight versions uh, again. Um, so just to be honest, I'm not sure like supporting 116 today costs us too much, right? It's not like we do some super lot of special effort. The, the problem is, is it's like a, a moral hazard, isn't it? It's sort of sending the message that we'll support a long way back into the past. And that's not really the message that we want to be giving, is it? Oh, in the I'm long run. Sure. I'm not sure how much you follow 
Slack, but there's every day some user who desperately thinks he needs to use Kafka 2.4, for example, and are not necessarily listening to the argument that they wouldn't use super old versions of other software. But yeah, I think it's also to some extent it blocks us in supporting other things, right? Like, I don't know, the the startup probes, for example, they are, I think, 119 plus or something. So it's not easy to use them if we want it. I don't think we have some super strong use case where we would say, oh, hey, I need to use this, this startup probe today. But at the same time, there will be a lot of smaller things which, uh, which are harder to utilize today because uh, of the old versions we support. So I think it makes sense to kind of talk about it. I'm just not sure what would be the answer what we should change it to. But I guess the survey is a good point. So the survey should give us data about uh, what the users are using and that might help us to say a bit more about it. Yeah, I mean, if we could say that we could just support 119 plus without in, you know, inconveniencing a large proportion of Strimzy users, then that might give us enough confidence to do that, right? Do we know what other CNCF projects are doing in terms of uh, supporting all the releases? Yeah, that was another thing that I was wondering. We could look at other projects, possibly specifically operators. I don't know whether that would be relevant. Probably not, but. So a lot goes to the to the to the meaning behind the supported word, right? Like like I know that if you open the the dashboard, oh, it's actually not here. It's on the on the GitHub. Oh, they don't have it here anymore. They used to have this table which said, oh, they have like, like this, right? Compatibility, Kubernetes versions, like 123 is fully supported. And then like the rest of it, I'm actually quite sure that it works with them but they basically say, yeah, some features might not work. So that's, I guess the question is, I'm not too happy about this approach because yeah, it's obviously easiest for us to say we support latest and the, the older ones, yeah, maybe they work, but maybe something changed because you actually don't know and you have no idea when users are reporting the the issues, but that's one example of how other projects are dealing with it. And that goes a bit to the latest version and three oldest versions or how many we would want, right? Because yeah, what would it mean in terms of testing? What would it mean in terms of working with the older versions and so on. Anyway, I'm talking too much and we are over the time. So I guess this is the key point and we should revisit it when we have the survey result again. Yeah, I think that's a good point to come back to it, definitely. And in the meantime, I guess everyone can think about all the points raised here. And the drain cleaner that will be for next time. Any last words?
if not, then thanks for joining for this long call. See you, bye.